Island Republic of Singapore. At just 680 square kilometers, this compact and strategically located nation boasts the busiest port in the world. It's also one of Asia's most important financial centers. A vibrant metropolis where East meets West, Singapore offers rich contrasts in architecture and culture, from towering skyscrapers to colorful ethnic enclaves. That's not all. This cosmopolitan city is also a world-famous food paradise. Brimming with limitless dynamism, Singapore's always teeming with exciting, unique experiences. And the very latest addition to the calendar, the Action Asia Challenge. Held previously in Hong Kong, Macau, Vietnam, Taiwan, Malaysia and the Philippines, the six-year-old event now comes to Singapore. A gruelling one-day adventure race, teams of two will compete in various sporting disciplines. Trail running, ocean kayaking, abseiling and mountain biking. It's the first extreme adventure race ever to be held in Singapore and the competitors will face some challenges never attempted before. All the government authorities have been so helpful in granting approval, which just is, it goes against the image of Singapore, you know, fresh, being bold, creative, and, and the government's been fantastic at giving us permission to abseil off Shears Bridge, to do bridge jumps off the Esplanade Bridge. Um, I'm not going to go into detail, but I mean, just take a look at the, what they're doing in the race, it's incredible. Well, we, we just, we're just here to have a lot of fun, and I think that's what everyone's here for. We haven't got a clue where we're going. We're looking sure forward to this that. thing off the Durian over there. Yeah, that looks fun. Yeah, it's serious awesome. fun, mate, coming down that. That's, that's worth the uh, entrance fee on the same. Today, 300 international participants will travel almost 60 kilometres. The first team's expected to finish in less than five hours. This challenge isn't any ordinary endurance race. Besides being tested physically, competitors will also learn more about teamwork as they explore Singapore's contrasting landscape. The race gets off to a start with a 30-metre swim off the Merlion and back. Among the athletes is Team Kampong Boys, comprised of local TV celebrities Tay Ping Hui and Jeff Wong. This is Tay's third Action Asia Challenge. When you're doing it, you know, you actually curse and swear and you're wondering why you're doing it. But after do, uh, completing the course and everything, you just, you just want to do it again. It's, it's, it's a, the sense of achievement when you finish it is really good. So I think I speak for all the competitors and it's addictive. Lah. It's, it's a little addictive, so we keep coming back. Barely a few minutes into the race, the shock factor kicks in. I imagine just waking out of bed at four o'clock in the morning, you're, you know, you're throwing food down, trying to get ready for a race, and all of a sudden, bang, the start goes off, you're swimming, climbing up your bridge, and you're looking off the edge like, oh my goodness gracious. True to his promise, this nine-metre jump off the Esplanade Bridge is the first of several interesting challenges Mades has added just for fun. The actual length of the swim is almost the same as five laps in an Olympic-sized swimming pool. At the end of this leg, competitors will pick up their bikes to get to the next part of the course road biking. This four kilometre section will take an average biker less than half an hour. Along the way, teams will pass through the city's financial district before reaching Sentosa, an island resort south of Singapore. Boasting immaculate sun-drenched beaches, Sentosa, which means the Isle of Peace and Tranquility, is an idyllic weekend getaway for many local Singaporeans, as well as a famous tourist location. Going up to Sentosa was a brilliant idea, because even though it's the fourth time I'm racing here, I've never been to Sentosa, so I feel like every time I come here, I see a different part of the, of the city, which is, just makes it more exciting. Today, the athletes capture a glimpse of the various attractions on the island. 
But the tour wouldn't be complete without a trip to the golden beaches of Sentosa. Next, the racers will head for the island's famous historical attraction, Fort Siloso. Built by the British in the 1880s, Fort Siloso is the only preserved coastal fortification in Singapore today. Back in the 19th century, the opening of the Suez Canal had led to increased trading activity in Singapore. To protect the western entrance to the growing harbour, this fortress was built on Sentosa, formerly known as Black Ang Mati or Island of the Dead. But despite being one of the world's most fortified countries of its time, Singapore still fell into the hands of the Japanese in World War II. From March 1942 to September 1945, the coastal fortress witnessed its darkest reign when the Japanese turned it into a concentration camp for prisoners of war. It was only three decades later that Fort Siloso was given a new lease of life. For many war veterans and their families, the fort serves as a poignant reminder of the Japanese occupation and Singapore's colonial past. Doubling up as a gun museum, Fort Siloso also boasts a magnificent display of artillery, a sight to behold as the competitors make their way through the area. The humidity is now getting more intense and the athletes need a way to cool down fast. With the bridge jump behind them, the teams commence a 15-kilometer road biking section that will end at Rifle Range Road. More than an hour into the race, the competition's heating up with the two lead teams neck and neck. Winners of the last challenge in Macau, Englishman Adrian King and Portuguese Henri Galvo of Team Red Bull Silver are leading the pack. Just behind them, Team Red Bull Blue. Danny and Pedro are very, very fast and quite often you can actually see them, okay? And mile after mile, hour after hour, you can still see each other and quite often you, you swap. Along the way, however, Team Red Bull Blue suffers a flat tyre. Portuguese Pedro Ribeiro and his teammate from Britain, Daniel Brown, are now losing time and distance. We were, at the first half of the race, we were all together and it, until my, my teammate Daniel crashed and had a flat tyre and we lost contact with the leaders. Uh, so it took us definitely some minutes to, to repair it and then it was catching up the whole time. Now the duo of Brown and Ribeiro must head into the trail run section of the course with no time to spare. Close behind, Team China Jump tries to catch up. New Zealander Greg Shand and Australian Cameron Richards know they can't be too far behind the lead teams. The course now takes competitors through a 3.5 kilometer stretch of paved and unpaved trails to the kayak transition.
The biking leg can induce serious muscle strains for many racers not used to the intensity. Teamwork is crucial in this race. Teammates not only physically help each other, but also boost morale and motivation. Still going strong and in high spirits, Thailand's Equinox Extreme. After almost half an hour, teams emerge from the trail at the McRitchie Reservoir. Today, over 100 hectares of primary forest still flourish in this area. Rubber trees, remnants of the plantations back in the 19th century, can still be seen along the fringes of McRitchie. Here, teams will paddle a one kilometer loop on the reservoir, a task that can take them about half an hour to complete. Finishing the kayak leg, Team Red Bull Blue is still in second position. Sometimes when we're feeling really tired, that's when the, the race gets tough for us. And it doesn't necessarily mean that, that that's the toughest part of the, of the course. Uh, because Singapore is, is fairly flat and we can't say that the course was, was very technical. So for us, the, I guess the toughest part of the course was when we had the, the flat tire because then it became a, a game of uh, uh, cat and mouse. Strong in mountain biking and just two minutes behind the lead team, Brown and Ribeiro are focused on maintaining speed and eager to take over. A full two hours behind the leaders, Team Kampong Boys is still hanging together. Our goal for this competition, this very competition, is to complete it. Uh, and if we complete it, that's alright. That'll be good enough. I mean, we're not going to come in top 10 or whatever, so we just want to complete it. Because in completing, completing itself is actually quite an achievement. All right, man. Action is a challenge. The next part of the course takes competitors through a six kilometer loop round the Bukit Timah Nature Reserve. Possibly the toughest stretch of the race, this section is critical, as it sorts out teams into those who are here to win and those who just want to finish. Still in the lead, the duo of King and Galvo are first into the transition. Strong at running, the mountain biking leg here promises to be a challenge. Whilst there was no climbs that went up a long way, what there was is that it was very undulating, meaning sharp, very steep ups, followed by very steep downs, very steep up and down. So it was very, very undulating, which was really hard on your quadriceps and uh, your calf muscles. And entering into the jungle at that point, it was getting rather warm. And when we were under the vegetation cover, it was like a sauna in there. It was about I swear it was about 98 degrees in uh, humidity, relative humidity, and you could feel the, the, the temperatures rise. The 163 hectare Bukit Tima Nature Reserve has one of the largest tracts of primary forest left in Singapore. Part of it's the Hindhead Nature Park, formerly an active quarrying site in the mid 1900s. The course now takes competitors on a short five minute swim in the quarry, but at this point in the race, it takes its wear and tear. Here, racers will be testing their mental endurance as well as physical stamina. Action Asia Challenge is a race for both professional athletes and weekend warriors. Although exceptional fitness is essential for a race like this, competitors are also finding out how much it takes to make it. Two kilometers further up from the Hindhead Quarry, the teams find themselves at the top of Dairy Farm. 
one of the few locations for natural rock climbing in Singapore. Here, competitors will abseil down the 15-meter cliff face. For some athletes, this section presents yet a new challenge, demanding technique as well as sheer grit. For others, the steep drop of the cliff face and natural fear of the unknown pose a formidable mental obstacle. More than three hours into the race, the first teams will have completed the abseil and a one-kilometre trail run before once again getting on their bikes. From here, it's a three-kilometre ride out of the nature reserve, followed by a 12-kilometre stretch back to the Esplanade. With the two lead teams barely seconds apart, the competition's now peaking to a dramatic finish. Having won the last Action Asia Challenge in Macau, King and Galvo are looking to win it again. But as they'll discover, in adventure racing, nothing ever goes to plan. About 10 kilometers from the end, I fell off my bike on the road, which was, uh, I think, the first time I've ever done that. It wasn't on the trail, it was on the road. Um, my front wheel touched uh, my race partner's back wheel and I just went over the handlebars. The moment we lost uh, the position was tough because we were right uh, with Pedro's and Adrian had that fall. And uh, that, that was the toughest in terms psychologically. You just lost the moment and that's it. Back at the Esplanade, racers get a second wind. They think the finish line is just up ahead, but they're wrong. Race director Madess springs yet another surprise, a feat that has never been attempted before in Singapore. It's a 25-meter abseil off the Benjamin Shears Bridge, just before the teams embark upon a kilometer of hard shell kayaking. Now on the final stretch of the race, Brown and Ribeiro are first to arrive at the Tyrolean Traverse. At this point, the competitors learn that mental prowess is painfully crucial as they overcome waves of muscle fatigue and conquer their personal fears. This challenge, though, is only a prelude of what's to come at the Esplanade. Magnificently located on Singapore's waterfront promenade, the Esplanade is a distinctly recognizable landmark in the city. The new culture center has earned the nickname Durian, as its shape resembles two halves of the durian fruit. Housing five auditoria, the Esplanade harbors a 2,000-seat horseshoe-shaped theater. Its four tiers reminiscent of a classical European opera house. With the use of state-of-the-art technology, every performance here is a multi-sensory feast. But it's not the interiors of the Esplanade that the competitors are up close with today. It's a breathtaking panoramic view of the city skyline from the roof of the Durian. Here, race director Mades chalks up another first with this zip line down the esplanade. It's a feat of daredevilry, not for the faint-hearted.
the racers are down the zip line, it's all to the finish. Four hours, 40 minutes after the start of the race, Brown and Ribeiro are first to complete the course. Second place throughout most of the race, they've won Singapore's first Action Asia Challenge. Wonderful to be at the finish. We're both knackered, but the race went very well for us. I think that uh, team dynamics was the, the key point today, because uh, we had a flat tire, and to catch up to the front, it was, it was hard work, but we managed, and here we are. Just four minutes behind, a King and Galvo. Second to cross the finish, it's a bittersweet ending for the duo pegged to win first place throughout the race. It was a very, very tight race and uh, about an hour from the end, on the, uh, on the bike, I flipped over and slipped and we lost 200 metres and we couldn't make it up. So that's, Sorry. that's adventure racing for you. Finishing almost 22 minutes later is Team Blue Trek, winners of the mixed team category. At seven hours, two minutes, Team Virgins are the first women's team to finish. As the athletes stream in, it's clear that this challenge hasn't been solely about winning. For many, just finishing the race has been a personal triumph. Especially so for Team Kampung Boys, who crosses the line seven and a half hours after the start. The only celebrity team to finish the race. I'm very happy that we completed the course because uh, it was quite tough. And it's Singapore, so it's special for me. And it was all in good, good spirit, and I think, and it was tough. So I think this goes to show that Singapore, if we really want to find the location, there are locations where we can kill people. It's great, I love it, I love it. As Singapore's first Action Asia Challenge draws to a close, there's a hint of things to come for the next in Hong Kong. The speed of this race was much, much faster because there's a lot, I mean, 59 kilometers versus uh, an average 30, 35 kilometer course in Hong Kong. So Hong Kong, you're doing a, a much more smaller course uh, because there's many more mountains. I think in, in general, you know, look forward to a hilly course in Hong Kong.